Hello, Cancer. Thank you very much for tuning into this week's read. For the main part of the read, I'm using Tarot Illuminati by Eric C. Dunn. Supportive Oracle cards, I treat like this like an Oracle deck. I know it's actually listed as a Tarot card deck. Uh, the Acacia Tarot by Sharon Ann Kling Klingler and Sandra Ann Taylor. But to me, it doesn't really read like a Tarot deck. I do like it, but there's noticeable differences, and it just... I just don't equate to it like a tarot deck, but I think it's a good deck. So, I want to use it, but I can't use it as a tarot deck because I just don't feel like it matches. Uh, I think it does other things, which is fine. I think they did good work, and they want to list it as a tarot deck. That's their business, but I just don't feel like it is. Um, still a good deck. Still a very good deck, in my opinion. Um, this is Cancer. Cancer. Is your card out here? I thought I saw it for a second there, but maybe not. Okay. Um, but your card is the chariot from what I understand, but I'm not seeing it out here. So, where are we going? You got really powerful cards though. So what are you doing? What are you doing? You got, <laughs> you got the War of Roses. War of the Roses here. In, in Crescent Moon. In Crescent Moon. These two together are really strong. Because it's kind of like, you know, when you fight for something, it's definitely because you believe in it. But the question is, how much of this is true? Because something here is a little bit in the shadows. Something is a little bit in the shadows. But when you're working towards it, there's a lot of beauty and there's a, there's a big reason. There's something that you see as good here. Something that's very worth it. And when you fight for something, there's a reason for it. Like, you're not just one to just start a fight because you're bored or just start a fight out of a possibility. You really believe in it. And if you're going to stand up for it and stand behind it, there's very something There's something very strong behind it. Because you got judgment in your favor, judgment in your favor and temperance. This is one of those, this isn't just an argument either. This is something where this fight goes on and on and on and on and on because you believe in what you're fighting for and you believe that things have to go differently. So you're not letting it down. You're not letting the situation down. You're not willing to... You're kind of like, the only way this is going to stop is because somebody is forcing me to stop. Because I'm not going to back down. I have to fight what I feel is right. It's a very strong energy on your side right there. In the opposing side, we're going to call it the opposing side for now, on track, Lightning Bolt, which can be the Tower card sometimes, uh, Four of Swords, and there's one more card, but I feel like we got to call these first. Um, so you got... The lightning bolt back here, right? And then you got on track right there. Something is shocking the people or the person. Like, you're making a point. You are making a point. But I'm not willing to say it's being acknowledged. Excuse me. You're making a point and they don't like it. I know that. Um, you're making a point that they really have to think about. I'm getting you're going to know it. The trick is make a point and that's your moment to walk away. Once you make your point and you know they've heard it, walk away. Because if you end the conversation there, then they have to kind of sit on that. Um, you don't want to give them time to like, create reasons why that or create reasons where they can just invalidate it make your point you're gonna see I feel like you're gonna see it walk away just walk away leave it where it is um because they have to mull it over that's the lightning bolt because they feel like they're on track until you hit them with this lightning bolt then they have to take a minute to really sit back and think about it it's best if they sit back and think about it with the four of swords they need to think about it um and the more impact the most impact I feel like you can have is like make your point then walk away because then it just kind of because <laughs> then they have to think about how they're going to rebuttal it next time they see you and they have to keep going over it and keep thinking about that one point because they're like oh you think you made a good point with that one but um <laughs> oh um yeah because you're making a point and they don't like it they don't like it but you stepping away just kind of keeps them in that energy like well how am i going to rebuttal that then they keep thinking about it and they're like yeah I mean, that is a, that's a point. I feel like they're struggling with it. Like, that's a point. 
Like, we all have opinions, right? I feel like they're kind of wrestling with it a bit. But if they can do it on their own, in their own private thoughts, they might literally give your information a chance. They have to do it by themselves. It has to roll around in their brain a little bit on their own. They have to really get a chance to think about it because they think it will. Because they keep thinking they have to rebuttal it at some point with you. So they're trying to come up with an argument against it. But when they have to, the more they think about it, the more they try to find a good argument against it, the more it kind of validates itself is what I'm getting. Because you do have a point. There's a point you're bringing forward and they have to go through it a few times. Now, the Eight of Pentacles, it doesn't feel like things are changing at this point. But there's a chance. When you come to the eight, the eight kind of, you know, the next progression from eight is nine. For me, nine is the end. Nine is the reset. It goes one through nine, then we reset and we start all over again. That's how I interpret it, just to be fair. Um, we're doing this. Okay, we're going. So is it? I, th I want to know if it's going to change. So what comes in next? I want to know if it's going to change. <laughs> I really do. Now, the Ark of the Covenant is on your side, right? Which is interesting. Um, diversity, which is the Five of Scrolls. So when I'm getting this, it's something about a mystery, and it's the information coming forward to solve this mystery, right? How willing are we to look into this Ark and find out what's really in there? How much are we? How much do we really want this solved versus how much do we like the mystery that it creates? It's almost like now we can come forward and we might have enough information to actually figure it out and do what we need to do with it. Because when I see the arc, it does remind me of a little bit of Indiana Jones. I'm gonna be honest with you, but I'm more feeling like it's it's a it's guarded, it's guarded things. It's guarded information that's bringing something together. Kind of like there's something beautiful here. But it's mostly shrouded in mystery. It's not really a public thing. It's mostly shrouded in mystery. And I'm getting this, the five of scrolls with diversity. I'm getting like somebody saying, we have different ways to figure this out. We don't have to go by the rules of the old ways. We can go our own way and create a new way of looking at this. And maybe that's what we need to actually figure this out between us. Maybe that's the trick here. Even though I made a point and you don't really like it for them, and they don't really like the point you made, Maybe we can do something different. Maybe we can do something unconventional. What other options do we have? Maybe we can think it out. Because I'm getting here for a moment. You have the eight, uh, the Ten of Cups, which is telling me things seem very stable. This person seems to be, dare I say, sympathizing with you? I'm not sure this is going to... I don't know. We'll see. Let's go a little farther because I'm like, they're sympathizing with you, but can we build anything from it? We'll find out. Um... What goes in next with them is the waterfall with the Seven of Swords. Um, they're only going to get so far with whatever you're, whatever you're telling them, whatever you're saying to them. It's only going to go so far. Because when I'm seeing the waterfall, I'm seeing this big ledge, right? The big ledge that the water comes down. There's only so far they can go, and then they're like, well, it's a waterfall. It's, that's as far as we're... Like, it's almost like they're not going to go to the top of the waterfall and see where it's being fed from. It's kind of like it's a waterfall, so I don't know. It's almost like they're they're kind of. It feels like a blunt ending to me, especially with the Seven of Swords. Like they could go farther with this, but I don't. I feel like they're abandoning it with the Seven of Swords. Like there's more to there's more to go. There's more to see. There's more to do. But I feel like they're abandoning it. I don't want to see it that way, but it just keeps coming through that way. I'd like to see something more, <laughs> like they're going deeper with this. Thing is. I feel like you get it. You see this person, and you're understanding that's as far as they can go. The Ten of Pentacles on your side is kind of like, you know what, all right, I need, to, I need to take stock in what I've learned from this. They've listened to me to a point, but they only got so far, and then they had to ditch, and then they, weren't, they just changed the subject, and they don't want to talk about it anymore. So I'm only going to get so far with this person, and that's just how it is. And then this 13 here, the Buddha prepares, which I'm getting like, it's kind of like uh, when I'm seeing all these images behind the Buddha, it kind of reminds me of that diversity card a little bit in the sense of like, there's a lot of different ways you can go with this. So you have a lot of different possibilities. This situation, that may be as far as this person's going to go. Hopefully that's as far as you need them to go, or hopefully it's far enough, I should say. 
But in certain ways, you might be able to help the, you might be able to help this person kind of connect with you in the future, or help this person forward when you need to, to where they can kind of um, not feel so out of place. Because I feel like when I'm seeing this, like there's a good idea or good energy coming forward. Like I feel like you're looking at this, like all right, we made it this far in this situation, and that's as far as we're going, but. When I need to call on this person again, or when I need to deal with this person again, maybe I can use these same ideas to further those other things. They, they can only go so far. Whoever this person is, you do have enough success. I feel that you're you're satisfied, um, but you also seem to be accepting. With that Buddha card, it seems like you're accepting. Like this is this is as far as it's going, but this is good, and I can actually. I can stabilize with this. I can make something. I can fortify something and feel like this is where they're going to stay with that. I understand why and I understand where they are and they're not going any farther, but I can I can work with that. Um, be careful going forward because I'm getting the Four of Roses. When I'm feeling this card, it shows the ego, right? And it shows like there's a beautiful man in the mirror and then there's these people around him. So he's not paying attention to what's around him. He's just seeing, like, it's, it's, to me, it's like tunnel vision. When I see this card, it's kind of like you see what's right in front of you. You might have a danger of seeing what you want to see versus what's really there. So they're warning you, like, don't see this person in too, too much of a rosy light. You know what I mean? Be careful. Keep it in reality. I kind of feel like I said this to Pisces in the last reading a lot. Make sure you keep putting your feet on the ground. Um... Because you want to like this person and you want to trust them for some reason. But they're saying, keep your feet on the ground. Don't see it just the way you want to see it. Be aware of when you're doing that. Kind of like, every now and then do that little self-audit thing. Like, am I seeing who this person really is? Or am I seeing who I want them to be? That's what I'm getting from that. Because I'm getting like, I feel like their colors have not changed. When I'm getting this, the King of Scrolls, this is somebody who's very smart, in my opinion. Somebody who decides what they're going to do next, and they're very contemplative. Um, you did get so far with this person in this situation, and I feel like you're taking that pretty well. You're like, that, like, hey, we got some, we got far ahead, farther ahead than I thought we would. They're only going to go so far. I understand that, but I feel like what they're saying is like, don't just assume you can use the same pattern to get forward with them at a later date because I feel like this person they might be a little bit manipulative it, it, it this tends to feel like the king of swords to me they just make it a little differently but this is somebody who could be contemplating and they might be like, playing the double game on you or what do you call it the double spy or whatever you want to say where it's kinda like they might schmooze up to you in the future have you believed that they're on your side when in truth they're just moving forward to what they want? This is an energy that might use you in the future. Be careful. They might use you to get what they want because they notice how you felt about the situation. And one of the reasons they might have walked away is because kind of like, well, the, the cancer is liking me right now. So I'm going to step away and let it be. And maybe this cancer can be beneficial to me later. I feel like that's where this energy is. So be careful of that because I got... The Akashic Library, the Two of Wands, which is the choice, and the world. They might have other plans, and they may want your they want might want your um, support on something going forward. Just remember to see them for who they are, not for who they you not for who you want them to be. Be careful of that. Um, water signs can sometimes do that. Cancer is very that, that can be the downside of cancer. When you're loyal to somebody and you believe in somebody, it's hard for you to believe otherwise. Because you see the beauty in people, which is a great gift. It can be a very wonderful thing. But it's times like these, kind of like, slow down and audit this person. See how they're treating other people. I'm always saying that. Watch how they treat other people. Also, watch how they treat you. Do they treat other people and you the same? If it's different, do they treat you better or worse, for one? And if they're treating you better, is that got a time limit? <laughs> be aware of it. Because I feel like that's what they're warning about. Like, this situation, this person, you might warm up to them a little bit, and you haven't in a while, and you're kind of feeling like you won them over. They might be setting you up to use you later. Just be ready for it. That's all. All right. That's what they want to give you, so I'm going to let that be. 
Thank you for watching. If you'd like a direct reading from me, shoot me an email, jamesforastral at gmail.com. That's james the number four, astral at gmail.com. Thank you.